Alzheimer's are starting to help um, protect us from... Alzheimer's is not an epidemic, it's an individual thing. But now, a lot of individual... When I say it's not an epidemic, we use the word epidemic only if it's infectious and it spreads from person to person. So if you forget, I will not forget, okay? <laughs> so it is not something that's spreading from person to person. A lot of people are causing it to themselves, why? And maybe atmospheres around also are causing to some extent. So, there are so many modern amenities which are interfering with many aspects of our lives and everything. In India, here I don't know in what forms it has happened. In India, the cell phone tower growth happened phenomenally in the last ten years the largest growing cell phone market on the planet. Every year, we're adding sixty million phones. And uh, in the rivalry between one company and the other, you will see in the same place, three, four cell phone towers are standing up. They could use the same facility, but no, four will stand up. Most of you would remember when you were growing up, wherever in the country, there were sparrows. Hmm? Hundreds and thousands of sparrows all over in every city. And there was such efficient cleanup, you know. <laughs> if you eat something and leave, the sparrow will come and clean it up in a moment, you know. They were everywhere. Today, except in a few places, in most places there's not a single bird all killed by the cell phone tower. So the bird's brain gets fried and it dies because of the cell phone towers. Yours will become a bird brain. It's a larger one, so it withstands all that, but slowly it'll become a bird brain. There can be many complex reasons, there's not one reason, but some of the things with, that were very obvious are People who are today in their uh, seventies and eighties, uh, I, I could be wrong about the percentages, but I believe at least sixty percent of them have abused drugs at some time. I'm saying they've abused at some point. We'll come to prescriptions later, <laughs> self-prescribed <laughs> because People who went to the university in sixties and seventies, I would say eighty percent of them have touched some kind of drug at some point. Am I right? In sixties and seventies, is it not so? At least eighty percent. They may not have been regularly on it, but they have used. You need to understand, especially synthetic formulations of psychedelic drugs, just one use can destroy many things within you, just a single use. So those who have used synthetic drugs, even a single usage could have damaged their system. Those who have gone on natural substances, a more prolonged usage can cause the damage. Those who have gone on alcohol, a prolonged usage and excessive usage can definitely cause the damage. Those who are on prescription med medicines, that could be the most dangerous thing. The first and the last are the most dangerous things. Psychedelic, synthetic drugs and the prescription medicine could be causing the maximum damage. When I say prescription medicine, because I… I do not know, I have no… I mean, I don't go and look for, okay, how many people are causing damage to themselves, it's not a pleasure for me to explore on the internet. But looking at the advertisements on the television, how they're advertising anti-allergic, anti-histamines, things, these people are causing enormous damage by taking those things, enormous damage. Okay, you may stop sneezing, but why you stopped sneezing? You have to look at it. When something irritates your nostril, you must sneeze. If sneezing stops, that does not mean the substance is not irritating you. It is just that we're cutting off something which would cause sneezing, isn't it? Yes or no? You just cut off. It is like you're driving and somebody in front of you 
another car, puts on an indicator, he wants to turn right. You don't like it, you want to pass him, so you shoot off the indicator. <laughs> if you shoot off the blinker, this doesn't mean the truck in front of you is not going to turn right. <laughs> it's still going to turn right and you're still going to drive into it. So there are… these factors are there. Apart from this, there has been a copious usage of insecticide, herbicide, all kinds of side. This is suicide. So all these things put together and lifestyle in terms of… See, it is a known fact in India. It's commonly known in a village, an uneducated person knows that if you eat old food, your brain will become dull, okay? Hmm? Do you know? If… if in a school or something, some student is dull, teachers will ask, what are you eating old food? Why are you so dull? It's a, like a common conversation. <laughs> you must be eating old food, you're so dull. Because if food is cooked in the yogic system, any cooked food must be eaten within an hour and a half, max four hours. Beyond that, it's dead and gone. But now you're keeping it for months and eating it, months. Already it's on the store shop shelf for a month, you keep it in the refrigerator for another month before you eat it, I don't know, six months maybe, and then you eat this, you're causing serious damage. Because this half-baked understanding of the whole human system and saying, okay, there are proteins, there are vitamins, if it's not there, pump it, extra protein you pump into this, mix that, mix that and eat it, you're causing serious damage. There are various aspects. I… Uh, it was… I, I couldn't believe this, I couldn't come to terms with it for some time. When one of the doctors pointed out, in the medical textbooks in America, it says that it's normal for you to empty your bowels once in three days. It's considered normal. Up to a week is okay. Beyond that, we should be concerned. In the yogic system, Every day, twice a day, you must empty your bowels, not once. Because the food, the moment it moves to large intestine or the colon, it must go out, it should not stay there. If you keep these impurities in the system, it'll work in a certain way. An unclean colon and an imbalanced mind are together, always. If you go to any Ayurvedic doctor, Siddha doctor, the first thing they will do is purge you, always purge you. Many of them who've grown up in traditional South Indian families, every month drink castor oil and purge yourself, <laughs> really. It's a ritual in our homes. When we are children, every month you have to drink warm castor oil and you purge and purge and purge everything till a point where if you drink water, only water should come, <laughs> really, yes. It's very important to keep the system clean. The yogis do it differently, they go stand in the river, they suck the water from the renal outlet, fill it up till here and let it go, fill it up till here and let it go and they will check if simply pure water should be going, till then it is done. This is called Jaladauti. These things are important, keeping the system clean is important if you want to have psychological health. Loss of memory is just one of them, okay? Even then when they had memory, it's tortured memory. It's better, you lose memory, at least you're little better actually for a lot of them. It's a relief. When you torture yourself continuously, the only solution is, if we, er if we erase the memory, at least you're free. But the problem is, all the memory never goes. Nobody has lost their memory absolutely. Yes? They lost short-term memory, they can't remember what happened ten minutes ago, but they remember what happened fifty years ago. And that bothers them. When they're eighty-five, they're beginning to behave like they're fifteen or… and it's pathetic. When their brain is going down, their body is also going down, but the medical industry won't let it go down. 
We want to stretch it little more because it's good for the economy. We should know when to go gracefully, yes? You need to understand this, when life slipped into this body, it slipped in without any friction, isn't it? Hmm? Even your mother did not know when it happened. You think she knows? She does not know when it happened. Only when she gets a kick from inside, only then she knows. Till then, she doesn't even know how this life slipped in to a small meatball that it was to start with, yes? So when life slips into the physical, it slips in with absolute ease, without any struggle, to make this life in such a way that when it leaves also it leaves without any friction is an important part of living. It's a very important part of living. And we've ignored all these things. If we think ignoring the fundamentals of life and living here, there is no price to it, <laughs> then that's a foolish life. If you ignore gravity and try to climb there and simply walk from there to here, and if you fall down and break your bones, is it wrong, I'm asking? Is it wrong? Is nature cruel to you? No, you're supposed to understand the basic laws of life, isn't it? And if you spray something and kill that insect, is it wrong? A little more of it also, not the whole of you, at least it killed a part of your brain. Is it wrong, I'm asking? Huh? It's bound to happen, isn't it? How can it not happen, I'm asking? It's bound to happen. So, our ideas of science and technology, <laughs> it's very juvenile, if you ask me. Very, very juvenile. But the world is on full thrill right now. If you talk about this, they will say you're archaic. They will say you're anti-modernization, you're anti-development, you're anti-this, the enemy of the people. We have to pay for it. And uh, the kind of memory that a lot of people carry, if they lose it, they must be happy. They don't know how to carry life's memory within them in a pleasant manner, isn't it? Yes? Most people carry such bitterness within them, forgetfulness is a relief. And somewhere, unknowingly, they're asking for it. So when something tortures you really bad, won't you want to forget it? Yes or no? Yes. Knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, we are seeking it in many, many ways. So, one of the most important things to do is, uh, if you build a temple here, I would advise you, you also build a small community where people will live healthy, sensibly. Hmm? So, not necessary to build one big ashram or something. Even if it's just in the city or outskirt of the city, build even a condominium. You want one bedroom, one bedroom, you want three bedroom, three bedroom, you want five bedroom, five bedroom, whatever kind you want, invest, build and at least you can live separately, at least you can eat in a common place, healthy food, you can meditate in a common place, you can do your yoga in a common place, you can live separately. We should do this, otherwise, each to his own way. It's going somewhere, you know. If you want yourself and those of you who have children, if you want to create something, this is a simple way to find a solution, to live in a conscious society. It may be… we would like the whole society to be too like that, but we can't change all of them right now. At least create a small society and we can make medical studies on you and how it works. Then maybe some days everybody will take it up. 
just living little more consciously, eating consciously, doing things properly, what difference it makes to people if it's… it can be measured if we just take the trouble of doing it. If we show the difference in this community, how people are living and what are the things they're avoiding, maybe someday everybody will take it up, hopefully. Possible? You want to do your own cooking? And it's not good for the economy, you know? Every home has its own kitchen, has its own gas connection, has its own everything, everything, everything. It's such a waste, isn't it? And everybody is spending two hours cooking. For this many people, if five, six people go into the kitchen, they can cook for everybody. Others can do something more productive than destroying food in the kitchen. Yes, you must look for that if you want solutions. If you just like to lament about it and continue, a lot of people only like to cry about it and do the same thing. Cry about it, do the same thing. Because they want their own kitchen, they can't stand anybody else in the universe. Can you? Can five women manage in one kitchen without fighting, quarreling? Possible? Yes, it's time you grow out of this. Your homes are separate, your bedrooms are separate, everything is separate. Kitchen and meditation and certain things we can share, isn't it? Yes or no? If that much cohesiveness is not there in us, then talking spirituality will remain only talking spirituality. It will never be a genuine step.